You know, people, many people say that a mother's love is like God's love, and it is. The, the way that mothers care for their children, we think back to me personally of what my mom did for me, of sports games and lunches, and she would say many times, I'm number, fan number one, um, her and my dad. My dad was fan one, she was fan 1A, so um, <laughs> that was their main thing. But, um, you know, my mom helped me so much growing up. Um, putting me through private education, Christian Academy, all those years, all the years of, you know, lunches and sports games. And if my dad wasn't there, my mom was there for almost every single game. So thank you, Mom. Appreciate that. And today, um, like I was saying, of um, God's love is like a mother's love. Of Mothers love us. They love us when things are going well. They love us when things are not going well. Um, they're there for us. They're there to support us. And if your mom's not here with you today, um, remember back to the good times of how your mom supported you, the love that she had for you, and um, what she did for you. Um, and as we see of a mother's love is like God's love, uh, a mother cares for us, she's gentle, she's kind, um, she has a soft heart, and she's there for us always. And God is like that, that also. But God loves us, but uh, he wants us to mature, he wants us to succeed just like um, our moms do. Uh, they want us to succeed and have a better life than they did. They want things to go well with us. They want our life to succeed, for us to be prosperous, to be successful. And, you know, the word says that um, Jesus said, I've come to you and I have a, a life and have it more abundantly. And our moms want that life for us because God wants our life for that, wants a life like that for us. So, um, but there is a part that we play in our life of maturing and of succeeding and growing up. And a big part, and one of the keys to succeeding in our life is what we think about. Our, our thoughts of um, what we think about day and night, night and day. And in Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And Proverbs 4, 23 says, Carefully guard your thoughts, because they are the source of true life. In the Good News translation, it says, be careful how you think, your life is shaped by your thoughts. Uh, you wanna read that again, your life is shaped by your thoughts. Our entire life and what we do is shaped by what we think about. Um, that's, I know there's a lot of focus on um, you know, what we do and how we act, but there should be a lot of focus on what we think about also. That verse says, your life is shaped by your thoughts. Think, you know, think about it. <laughs> of um, Every part of our life, of where we work at, um, our friend group, it all started with a thought. Like for me personally, of I played college basketball growing up, and it started back when I was in middle school, of I had that desire to play college basketball, and it started with a thought of I would like to do that one day. I would like to go play basketball, and it started with what I was thinking about. The friend group I have it started with thoughts. The where I work at started with a thought. Everywhere, everything part of our life started with something that we thought about. And you know, why does it even matter what we think? You know, what we think about. Why does it even matter? Why does why is it important? You know, what um, what effect does it have on our life? Does it really make that big of an impact or not really? Well, Romans 8, 6 says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and is peace. To be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. To be carnally minded, that means like thinking on the natural, thinking on things that are not um, on the Bible or on spiritual, that brings death into our lives. But to be Spiritually minded, to think on the right things, brings life and it brings peace. Going back to this, this verse of um, from Proverbs 4.23, your life is shaped by your thoughts. And to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and is peace. You know, this reminded me of a, a story I heard one time of the healing um, director at Rhema. Of he, would, he taught healing school and... He would come in on Monday morning, and there were people who would come in there, and they would be coming in with, like, oxygen machines, having a tough time to breathe. They would be coming in with cancer, 
of all kinds of things going on in their body, and you could hear the machines going on while he was preaching. That's how loud it was. And from the story, he said, you know, you were concerned about, you didn't know if they were going to make it through the service. It was that bad of the breathing machines and how bad a shape they were in. But he said that as he went on, they had school, they taught them the word hour after hour, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And by the end of the week on Fridays, you'd look at these same people and they would be sitting up straight, they'd be breathing better, they'd be, you could see that, that something, a miracle had happened and that they were physically better than when they came in on Monday morning. And it was listening to the word, it was thinking about it, receiving it, and thinking about it over and over and over again. They would break for the weekend on Friday. They'd go home Saturday and Sunday. They'd come back on Monday. He said they would come back, and they'd come back in the same shape they came in the previous Monday. And this wasn't just one week. It was week after week after week. Uh, they'd come in on Monday morning, this bad shape. By Friday, they're in great shape, and then they'd come back the next Monday and be in the exact same old shape that they were in. And finally, he asked the Lord of, about this, why this was happening. And he said, the Lord told him that when they're with you, it's like they're touching me, of they're touching life and peace of what we read, to be calmly minded as death, but to be spiritually minded as life and peace, and that they're thinking on the word, they're thinking on thoughts they should think on, and as they're thinking on that, hour after hour, they're touching life, and they're touching him, and they're getting better. But when they go home for the weekend, they start to have people come back to them and say, how are you feeling? And, you know, don't tell me all that Bible stuff. Tell me um, how you're actually feeling. Then they go back into the same, you know, oh, I don't feel that great. You know, I'm not that doing that well. And by thinking on those thoughts again, of uh, stopping to think on the word and starting to uh, think on the natural again, they go back into their old condition. This example of, is really, really clear of to be calmly minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. And these people, uh, they were touching Jesus, they were touching the word during Monday through Friday, and they were experiencing life in their life. But then once they went back on Friday, on Saturday and Sunday, they experienced death because they stopped thinking on the Bible and on the word. And you know, in our lives, of, it might not be that drastic, but it could be bringing death in friendships. It could be bringing death in different areas of our life if we get our mind off of what we need to be thinking on in the Bible and start thinking on our natural and on carnal thoughts. So, You know, in Genesis, um, with creation, with Adam and Eve, when they started and before the fall, they were walking in fellowship with the Lord and um, that he would come down in the cool of the day in the garden and they were thinking on his thoughts and they were with him. But... Eventually, the serpent came and gave them all a different thought. He gave them a thought that was against what God said, that if you eat this, you will die. And that, um, Eve thought on that, and as she thought on it, it brought Adam sin, and it brought destruction. But it was a different thought that came in. Of They let that, that thought creep in, and it changed what they were thinking, and it eventually changed them. You know, so that's, those are two examples that we have there of... <laughs> At the count from Genesis and from this from, from healing school with people who were sick of how powerful what we think on allows us, uh, comes in our life. So, you know, what is a thought? You know, a thought is not material. If you, if you think about it again, a thought is not material. Um, it's not something that you can feel. A thought is something that is spiritual. You know, and every thought comes from somewhere. Every thought comes from somewhere. It comes from... It can come from God, it can come from wrong spirits, but every thought that comes to our mind is coming from somewhere. And discerning of what type of thought it is is crucially important to our life. And in Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, in his law he meditates day and night. He meditates day and night. He should be like a tree planted by rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. You know, if thoughts are so important that they can affect us mightily, which they do, then what are we supposed to think about? Well, in verse 2 it says, His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. In Joshua 1.8 
it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Just like today with it being Mother's Day and the honor we show to our our mothers of what they've done for us, they also want us to have success in our life and to go beyond, and to have a better life than they did. And having a better life um, and what they want is having good success. And right here it says um, that the way to have good success, part of the way, is that you meditate in the word day and night. Um, this is from Joshua 1.8, and it says this book of the law, but that includes the Bible for us today, of meditating in the word day and night. You know, and it's it could be easy to think, how can you think on the Bible all the time? Like every moment of every day, how can you think on the Bible? How can you um, think on things that you should even when you're working? Um, well, the Lord wouldn't tell us to do something that we couldn't do. And we can do this, and we do it with his help and by staying in a relationship with him and by um, obeying him and following him. And in Philippians 4, 6, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Now, is, is the Bible all of these things? Is the Bible true? Yes. Is the Bible honorable? Yes. Is Jesus right? Yes. Is Jesus pure? Yes. Thinking on Jesus, thinking on the Word, is doing what this verse is telling us what to do here, of meditating on it day and night and following him day and night in this. So, if, now we've seen the importance of, of thoughts, of how critical they are to our life and what we should think on, but there's also thoughts that come in that are not right, and how do we take those thoughts captive and deal with them? Well, 2 Corinthians 10 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We have to bring every thought into captivity to obey Jesus. Every thought, all day, every day, is how we do that, bringing every thought into captivity. You know, and if you learn how thoughts can try to take you captive, you can take thoughts captive. You know, thoughts come with feelings. If it's anger that you have at someone, um, thoughts come, but anger, the feeling of anger comes with that also. Um, so recognizing that how thoughts come will help us also to let them not be able to get a foothold in our life. In James 1, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Let's go back to verse 14. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Own desires. So, let's say, example, for depression. Let's say depression thoughts try to come to you, and... The feeling of depression comes to you, of that, you know, just wanting to, to not go on, wanting to, to quit, um, wanting to not do it anymore. That thought comes to you, and then the devil uses, entices. This last part says, and entice. The devil is the one who entices. So that's how it, it works, is the desire, say again, for depression, it comes to want to give into that, and then the enticing comes. That's how thoughts try to take us captive. Of It's something of our own desire, um, like example of depression, of not wanting to go along anymore, and that's how it tries to come and take us captive. But the way that we take it captive is with what we say. Of 
If a thought comes, you cast it down, and then you go on and you speak the word over it. In, in Romans 12, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By taking thoughts captive that come against us, and by submitting to what the Lord wants for us, we're able to see what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God in our life. And, you know, this this gives us a responsibility for our lives, too. In verse 2, it says, Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The transformation of our mind and going over the word again, over and over again, is how we renew our mind. Of reading it, studying it, and going over the word um, is how it gets ingrained into our mind, and that's how we renew our mind. I know for me personally, it's been... Um, you know, I see that about renewing our mind, but it's always been the question a lot of the time of how do I do that? How do I actually renew my mind? But seeing it through the word and going over a verse over and over again with the word is how we renew our mind, and it's how we study and how we can become successful in our life. So, and um, let's go to Matthew, Matthew chapter six, Matthew chapter six, starting in verse twenty-five. And this is a common, a well-known passage of Scripture. It talks about, verse 33 is about seeking first the kingdom. But there's a part before that that I think sometimes gets overlooked that I want to go over today. So, in verse 25 it says, this is Jesus speaking. He said, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they sow not nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying could add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And the first part before verse 33 was about not worrying, about not having concern, not yielding to thoughts that um, bring worry, bring fear into our life. And I thought, I think this gets a little bit overlooked, like I was saying, about how as we see this, is how we think on the right things, of not being concerned about how um, things that are going to happen in our lives, that the Lord will take care of us in every area. You know, if a thought comes about, you know, like maybe financial difficulty or something like that, of... Instead of thinking, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to pay this bill? Just think about, this. what did Jesus say? He said, consider the lilies of the field. You know, if someone comes to you and says, you owe $1,000. What do you have to say about that? I'm just thinking about lilies. That's what I'm doing. So, <laughs> so but, but just like today would be in Mother's Day of how our moms took care of us, how they loved us, and we didn't have to worry about it. Like, mom was there. She was there to help me. Um, She was there to support me, and I didn't have to be concerned about worrying about, oh, is mom going to be there for me today? She was there for me. And as we honor our moms today, that, and see what they've done for us and how they took care of us, that our Heavenly Father is the same way. If he helped us, he's always been there to help us and will always be there to help us. And as we see that and as we believe that, we don't have to worry. We don't have to yield to wrong thoughts about where is this money going to come from for the next bill? What about the doctor payment? What about issues in my body? Of, of God said, seek first my kingdom and don't worry about it. And as we do that, everything will be taken care of. So just as today of our, our mothers were there to help us, they were there to support us. And when we were younger, we didn't have to worry like, you know, I'm going to eat today. My mom's going to take care of me. Same thing with our Heavenly Father. If he's going to take care of us. And 
It's the same way, and that's how a mother's love is like God's love of we don't have to be concerned about it. We don't have to be uptight. We don't have to be worried and upset about anything because he'll take care of us. And, you know, thinking about it again of if you start to think on the thoughts of where's my next money for my bill going to come from or what am I going to, going to eat in the next couple days, thinking about that, like you could be completely at peace and relax and just start thinking about that and it could automatically raise your blood pressure. Like, it could automatically bring in stress, bring in, bring in all kinds of stress, start causing health problems because you weren't even thinking about it and the thought just came. Like, I know we've, I've experienced that of just being relaxed and peaceful and then some thought comes along and it just gets you all uptight and gets you nervous and all that. And that's, that's another thing of the power of thoughts, of not thinking on what we shouldn't is... Thinking on the right things is so valuably important. And this right here, example from Matthew of, this is a huge issue of, I know we know not to be in fear, but um, yielding the thoughts of fear is yielding the fear. Like, thinking on if a bill's due, thinking on the bill over and over again all day is yielding the fear. It is. And instead of worrying about that, just trusting God of, you know, he, took, he takes care of the lilies he takes care of creation, and he'll take care of me too. Just like our moms took care of us too. Uh, we don't have to worry about it. Just trust in him, think on his thoughts, and think what he told us to think on, and everything will be taken care of. Like, we don't have to go in our own strength. We don't have to go in our own ability. Just trust him, and it will happen. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Uh, part of what he's given us is a sound mind, the ability to think clearly in every area of our life and to, to see that and to have wisdom in areas of our life. And in James 1, it says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But if... But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Just like on Mother's Day as we honor our moms, they, all, they wanted us to succeed in our life. They wanted us to have a better life than they did and to be blessed and be successful in our life. This verse is saying that as we do the word and practice the word, um, that will happen for us. And part of practicing the word is, yes, is walking in love, is... Um, is praying, but another part of the word is, is thinking on the right thoughts. It is. And, you know, um, most people um, that I've, you know, been around sometimes of, in the past of talk about them, and they, they want to change things, but changing the mind is one of the least things they want to change. Like, they're willing to change, you want me to come to church, so I can come to church, but you want me to change what I'm thinking on on a Wednesday afternoon. Oh, you've gone too far. So... <laughs> But we can see it clearly in the word of how powerful what we think on is. It literally is life or death. And if you were to think on a thought that comes across your head of, this thought, if I yield to it long enough, could kill me. It would change what we think on and what we allow to think on. And another thing is that we have control over our mind. Um, I've heard before of some people say, well, I just can't control what I think about. You know, I don't have control over what I think about. Um, a thought comes to me, I can't control that all day. Well, yes, we do have control over what we think about because God wouldn't tell us to do something that we couldn't do. And I remember another story I heard of, there was this woman um, that was, um, this is at Rama again, there was this woman who was having uh, mental issues. She was having issues uh, like with the St. Asylum and stuff like that. And she came into the, the healing instructor's office and he shared with her the same passage from Joshua 1 that I read earlier about meditating on the word day and night. And once she heard that, she said, you can't do that. You can't think on the Bible all the time. And then he said, the Lord uh, said it to him that it came out of his spirit of, you're already thinking on something day and night. It's not a question of if, you're, if you are able to, it's you're already thinking about it, something day and night. And, you know, as we consider that, of, as we go through the day, there's not a time where you're not thinking on something. 
you know, someone asks, what are you thinking about? Well, it's just two ping pong balls going back and forth. <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, there, you're always thinking about something in your life every, all, to, all the time of the day, every day, is something is going on and what, and what you're thinking in your mind. And our thinking and, and believing set what, sets what God can do in our life. Um, again, about the importance of our thoughts and what's happening, of it's critically important that we think on the right thoughts, not just on Sundays, but that we continue to feed ourselves um, with the Word outside of Sundays. Um, Monday, Tuesday, every single day, we continue to feed on, on the Word and continue to renew our mind with what the Lord wants us to do. In um, Luke 6, this is Jesus speaking again in Luke 6. It says, For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. You know, we read earlier about, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And as what we think about, eventually we're going to say. And for Jesus said, for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. And that's not the end of that. Going on to verse 46, it says, he said, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat thinly against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. But you heard, he who heard and did nothing is like a man who built a house on the earth without a foundation against which the stream beat and immediately it fell, and ruin of that house was great. You know, Jesus connected these two passages about out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks, and about the common passage that we know about having our life founded on the rock. And it's connected. Of what we think about is part of um, being a doer of the word and obeying Jesus is part of thinking about and meditating on the right things. And that's something I actually saw today about that connection of um, how the Lord went into the story of the house on the rock right after he talked about out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, showing the importance of Jesus. So what he said about what we think about is so critically important and is part of being a doer of the word also. You know, so we've seen today of the importance of this and about renewing our mind, but as we go through daily life with work, um, with everything going on, how do we actually do it? Um, we can't actually read the Bible for 20 hours a day. It's not, it's not possible that way, but how do we actually do it? Well, a really good way I've, I've heard and learned is that um, listening to, to worship music a lot really helps with this. And seeing and, and getting that really helps to be able to meditate on the Lord and to, um, to worship him and be in his presence constantly. Um, I know a couple years ago, um, we were talking with Pastor Caleb, and um, we have Spotify. It's a music platform for that. And um, at the end of the year, there was, you know, how much music have you listened to for the entire year? And mine was like over 100 days worth of music, of listening to, uh, to worship music. Um, but I think it's critically important of just surrounding ourselves with worship music and with praise really allows us and helps us to be able to meditate on the Lord all the time. When we're in the car, when we're, if we're able to at work, if we're able to at the house, we just have worship music going in the background. It, it really helps to, um, to keep things going. And if you keep things quiet um, with no music going on, with you know, the news going in the background, um, it's really easy for the devil can give you bad thoughts that way. But if you surround yourself with, the, with worship and with praise, it helps also to be able to meditate day and night on the word. So I would encourage everyone, just, um, just find songs that minister to you. Uh, they can be, if your music is old country time music from the 1950s, do it. If it's, you know, elevation music, if it's anything like that, just, um, just listen, listen to stuff that ministers to you that um, the Lord has helped you with that is really important to you and makes a meaning to you. And as you do that, it'll become much easier to meditate on the Word of God day and night by doing that. You know, and finishing up in Philippians 4, it says, in the Passion Translation, it says, don't be pulled 
in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day, offering your faith-filled requests before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. Then God's wonderful peace that transcends human understanding will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. Keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real, honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind. And fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always. To this verse of the last part of praising him always, of this listening to worship music and praising him through that is part of being a doer of the word. And that's a practical way I was talking about it, like just getting music that ministers to you, that helps you, will help you be able to do this passage of scripture. It talks about the front of it, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. It's the same thing what Jesus was saying about don't be concerned about um, issues in your life, just don't worry about it. The Lord will take care of it. And as we follow him and obey him and think on his thoughts, it will all turn out okay. Isaiah 26.3 says, For I'll keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me, because he trusts in me. If by following and thinking on his thoughts day and night, part of the reward for that is him keeping me in perfect peace. If you don't have peace in your life today, think on him. That's a promise from Isaiah 26. About, he said, I'll keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on me, because he trusts in me. And that's how we trust in the Lord is, like I was saying earlier, if you have financial issues or um, a bill needs paid, instead of worrying about the bill, just think on the Lord, and that's trusting him of, I don't have to figure it out, he'll figure it out for me, and he's already taken care of it. And as we meditate on him, the reward of that is, is peace. So today, of being Mother's Day, and as we honor our moms, of what they've done for us um, in every area of our life, to help us, to, to try to help us be successful and to, to go beyond, um, to have a better life than what, what they did and to, um, because of the love they have for us and how God's love is like a mother's love also, um, that he loves us and part of the way that he wants us to succeed just like our mothers do is by thinking on the right thoughts so we can be successful. So as we do that, as we renew our minds, as we surround ourselves with, with worship music, with praise, praise and worship, that will help us in our daily life to follow him. As we do that, we'll be able to meditate on the word, to succeed in our life, and to follow his plan for our life. So, if, um, if you could sing with me, please, as we close out today. Father oh, God, thank you for today. I thank you for Mother's Day and how we've honored, honored mothers today and what they've done, so thankful for what they've done for us in our life. And as we go out this week, and as we spend time with our family today, help us to remember to think on your thoughts through the day, to surround ourselves with worship and praise music um, as we go out through our week. And as we do that, we know you will help us, and that you'll take care of every part of our life as we follow you and obey your plan for our life. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.